اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاقدت من لسانی افقہ قولی السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ So, <clears throat> I welcome all of you to lesson 4. This is the last lesson of Key to the, key to the Quran. Uh, let me share some feedback with you. Number one, um, I'm so happy, alhamdulillah, that most of the students are benefiting from the course. When they are in Taraweeh or when they are reading the Quran, they say they can understand a, a lot of words which they had no idea what they meant. Number two is that a lot of students want to do this in, uh, again, not the same course, but maybe uh, uh, further this course, like the next episode of this course. But uh, I don't know when it will be possible. I cannot give a definite answer for that because it all depends on uh, Sheikh Mustafa and the board of CIU. So whenever they decide, inshallah, we will try to do another course, similar course. Number three, there was a suggestion that we do this course in Urdu as well. Um, I still can't give any guarantee about having uh, to do this in Urdu because it will again require a lot of effort and time to translate the English translations into Urdu. I pick and choose the words when I do the translation. There are so many translations available and uh, I try to pick up the, the most authentic that I feel. I'm not a scholar, but still I try to make sense of what is in the translations. Another feedback is that um, some, some uh, sisters are uh, not too comfortable with the computers. So they would like to have um, a hard copy of the document of all the material that we have. I'm sure the brothers are okay, but from some of the sisters, they want a hard copy, so we will ask uh, CIU or IIOC or whoever can do it, so to help the sisters make hard copy, because when they tried to make copies at the store, they, they said just because there's color in it, it's going to charge them a dollar fifty or something per page, which would be too much, because if there are more than 100 pages, it's gonna cost them over $100. We made it free so that it becomes affordable. We did it online so that it becomes accessible. And now if they have to pay $100 or 100 plus dollars just to make copies, then it wouldn't be fair. So let's see we can, what we can do about it. At the end of the class, maybe we can ask Sheikh Mustafa to help us in finding a solution to this. Um, what was another feedback? There was another feedback, if I remember correctly. Okay, if I remember, I'll share it with you. So since this is the last lesson, I would uh, like to um, extend my thanks, but inshallah, I will do it at the end of the class. Let us start. Last time, now this is a, a brief recap of lesson three, which we did last time. There were some tangents that were remaining from lesson two, which we did in lesson three. And these were from ilah, the word ilah, which means two or two words, we took out a tangent, which is ala. And we did a few examples of using ala. Then we did the two words that were in the end of surah ashrah, which were fargab, fansab and fargab. It meant, fa means so, and in sab meant labor hard, and irghab mean, means turn your attention. From these two words, we took out some tangents and we talked about these words are actually used for commanding, for ordering, or for requesting. So we did some patterns. I just took out a few for your recap. Idhab, it meant to go. Idfa, repel. Ikhfid, lower. Irham, have mercy. So they have the same pattern. You can see that in, at the end of the, the last letter has a sukoon on it. The last letter has a sukoon on it. And usually the first letter either has a dhamma or a kasra. A dhamma or a kasra. Sometimes it may have a fatha, but that depends on the type, on the verb form we are using. Then we did the plural, the pattern for the plural of commanding, requesting, or ordering. We did uqtulu, awfu, kulu, ushribu, aqimu, atiyu, and udkulu. 
And we did a lot more, but I'm just, just for recap, I selected these. Uktulu means all of you like plural, kill. Aufu, give in full. Kulu, eat. Ushribu, drink. Aqimu, establish. Atiu, obey. And Uthulu, enter. Then we did the pattern for female singular. Most of the, these were like I gave you the examples were used for Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam. Uqnuti, usjudi, irki'i, kuli, ishribi, and kuli. So all these words are used. You see in the end you have a ya. When you see a ya in the end of a command, it means it is being ordered or being commanded to, to a woman and just one woman. Okay, singular. Then we did the pattern for feminine plural. You can see that in the end there is a noon with a fatha. Every time it has to be a noon with a fatha. That gives you the pattern for feminine plural. Aqimna, atina, atyana and uzgurna. Then we did the word for word translation of Surah Al Qadr and we did all these words inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr and then laylatul qadr ap appeared three times so we didn't repeat it here. The next one was khairum min alfi shahar. Khair we did what was khair and for min we went into more tangents which I am going to tell you now again. Alf Shahar tanazul malaikata war ruh fiha bi izni rabbihim min kulli amr salamun hiya hatta matla il fajr. All these words we did last time. Then some of the tangents which came out from Surah Al Qadr were fi, and we did a lot of ex examples about fi in which the meanings were different in, about, towards, during, concerning, through, in the matter of, among and into. And there are more than these translations if you look at the dictionary. But I selected a few. Then we did min and from min we went to min qabl and min baad. Min qabl means before, min baadi means after. We can also say min baadi he, after him or after it. We can say min baadi ka after you. We can say mim, mim badi valika, after that. So you can add something after mim bad or min qabl. Then we did min duni. Min duni means other than, besides or instead of. Min duni also means less than. Something less than something. Then from hiya, hiya hatta matla il fajr, I went to another tangent which was hiya means she or it, huwa means he or it, then we did anta, anti, antum, and antunna. Anta, you for masculine singular. Anti for you, masculine, uh, singular, feminine. Antum for plural, you, whether it's all men or men plus women. And then we did antunna, you for feminine plural. And I made it clear to you that two words are not in the Quran, anti and antunna. These two are not in the Quran. So I gave you examples which resemble these. I, instead of anti, it's kunti, okay? And antunna was some other example. Then we went to ana and nahno because these were the two words which were left. Ana means I and nahno means we. And then I also added one more tangent, e. E is like my, me or I. And I give you some examples of e. Then I introduced the concept of dual. In Arabic, there is a concept of dual that we don't have only singular and plural, we also have when you talk about two people, two books, two cities, anything, then we use the, the, the dual form. So here we say, we were talking about persons, so we were saying huma means they two, both of them, and I give you some examples from that, from the Quran. Then we did you two, or both of you, I give you some examples of the dual form, kuma and antuma. Then last of all, last time, I wanted to add this very badly, so I added this, what Allah loves. It doesn't belong to Surah Al-Qadr, it doesn't belong to any of the previous surahs, but just because I wanted all of us to learn a little bit about what Allah loves and what Allah does not like. So I added these two sections, what Allah loves, and we studied at tawabin who are constantly repenting to Allah. Allah loves them. Allah loves al mutatahirin who are purifying themselves both inwardly and outwardly. 
Purification means either cleaning yourself like Wusel and Wudu and keeping your clothes clean and everything, keeping your place clean. And the other thing is to purify from the inside. Normally, the word used for inside purification is zakah, tazkiyah. But in mutatahirin includes both. Al muttaqin means those who protect themselves from the wrath of Allah or from the anger of Allah. And I showed you the example how I explained to my students that if there are some thorns or there's a path which is thorny, how would you walk through that path? You would pick up your pants or your abaya or your pajamas or your shalwars or whatever you're wearing so that the thorns do not come and prick you. So this is how careful we should be when we are passing through something which will tempt us to sin. So we protect ourselves. So the basic word muttaqin is not just God fearing. It means to protect yourselves from things which will make Allah angry. Then we did muhsinin. Allah loves the muhsinin. And muhsinin are those who do their best in whatever they do. And I give you the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam like he said, he asked about what is Iman, what is Islam, and what is Ihsan. And when he described Ihsan, he said, it is as if you see Allah. But that cannot happen. In lifetime, we cannot see Allah. So if we cannot see Allah, we do something, we just imagine, and this is our Iman, that Allah is watching us. So when Allah sees us, how do we do our things? We do it to the best of our ability, to the best of our capability. So muhsinin are those who try their best, who do their best in whatever they do. Not only in ibadah, but in everything else. You give something to somebody, you do it in the best way. You buy something, you buy the best thing that you want. I mean, not going beyond your limits, but you try to do the best. al I this is people who deal justly who deal fairly, who don't cheat. Allah loves all these people. There are a number of other ayat which show whom Allah loves. But I didn't go into that because we had time limitations. So I just picked up these few. Then I also wanted to discuss what Allah does not like. Number one is musrifin. Musrifin, those who do israf, those who commit excess. And I told you that israf is not only to buy more things. It is if you can buy something for a lower price and you end up paying a higher price just because you want to show off or you want a, to show off a brand name or something, then that is also israf. It's not that you cannot buy a good car. You can buy a good car, you can buy good clothes, you can buy a good house. Allah doesn't, uh, Allah, uh, that is not israf. If you can afford, the blessings should show on you. But if you show off with that and you can do it in less, then it becomes israf. Those who are arrogant, al mustakbirin those who are not only proud, but they are arrogant because their pride shows in their, in their uh, attitude, in their behavior. That is the mustakbirin. Then those who transgress, there are certain limits of Allah. Allah keeps on saying in the Quran, ذلك, تلك حدود الله, تلك حدود الله. So those who transgress those boundaries and those limits, they are the mu'tadeen. Those who oppress, those who oppress, again I explained, it is not only those who do injustice with others, it is mainly those who do injustice with Allah. Because Allah is the one who is the creator, who is the nourisher, who is the cherisher, who is the sustainer, who provides everything, who keeps us alive, who causes us to death, removes every, every harm and evil from us, protects us, and then we join others in partner with Allah, then th th this is the biggest zulm that we can do. And that's why Allah says, in nashirka la zulmun azweem. Then we talked about khainin. Khainin are those who betray the trust or who are treacherous. Like we know what is amana. Amana means a trust. If somebody is not keeping the amana, and I said it's not only in terms of money, wealth, things, it is also something that you say. If I say something to you in this class and I say, please don't let it go outside this class, it becomes an amana then you can't go outside and tell people, look, this is what was said in the class. We should keep the secrets of whoever tells us to keep their secrets unless and until it is harmful for the Muslims or for the community. Then the last one we did was al-mufsideen. Mufsideen is again a very broad word. It means those who 
create corruption those who spread corruption those who do oppression all these things come under yani fitna those who cause fitna in the earth or mischief in the earth or corruption in the earth they are called mufsidin allah doesn't like the mufsidin coming to today's lesson we had decided last time that this time we are not going to do any other new ayah uh, any other new surah we are going to only do do the duas in the quran so i have selected some duas you know there are 100 duas more than 100 duas in the quran starting with rabbana or rabbi or, or uh, even uh, duas without having the rabbana and rabbi but i said we are going to select some duas which we normally pray every day these are the duas we make every day and people want to know the meanings of these duas and word for word meanings so i started with another dua and then i remembered that surah fatiha is the main dua that we pray every single day all of you know probably the meaning of surah fatiha but let's go start from surah fatiha so we have an idea what we are asking allah if we are asking allah for guidance then we can make the other duas So Surah Al-Fatiha Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdu Alhamdu means all praises and all thanks sometimes we just say all thanks and sometimes we say all praises if you look at the translations the urdu and the english and translations you will see either it says sab tarif allah ke liye or it will say tamam shukar allah ke liye no it means all praises and all thanks because we will thank some we will praise somebody who is doing something for us normally in this world allah is doing everything for us so allah is the only one who deserves all thanks and all praise but look at the word lillahi lillahi also means for allah but the word i chose here is are due to allah it is not these thanks and these praises are not due to any man but allah it doesn't mean we don't thank people because those who don't thank people will not be thanking allah it means here in this context when we say alhamdu means the thanks when you use a, the the when you add the word al to any any noun it means the the and the over here means all so all thanks and all praises are due to allah and what is allah he describes himself as rabbil alamin so it is rabbul alamin but because of the grammatical construction it becomes rabbil alamin which is the lord of the worlds again i said the word rabb cannot be translated into any language you can say lord that's fine master lord whatever so lord is the easiest one to translate rabbul alamin rabbil alamin the lord of the worlds Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman means the most merciful there cannot be anyone else who can be most merciful than Allah and Ar-Rahim like i said normally it is translated as the oft merciful the oft merciful is also okay because it means he is always merciful when you see the the im in a word it means it shows constancy it shows that it is being continuously done so allah is the most merciful and he is always merciful then maliki yawmiddin malik means the owner the master um there is a maliki yawmiddin which means he is the the king whatever you want to say he is the master the owner the king the authority of yawmiddin of the yawm means the day it means day but since we are combining it with yawmiddin it means the day of judgment iyaka iya means only or alone ka means you you already did ka so iyaka means only you you alone na abudu we worship so again like you've done in this course if i say abudu it means i worship if i say na abudu it means we worship so it's a combined dua like na abudu it is for all of us we worship only you we worship wa means and you already did that iyaka only you nasta'in nasta'in is seeking for help so it's not the help that you ask that you cannot ask from somebody else like please can you pass me the pen can you give me a book can you bring me this these kind of helps are, are like in the dunya it's like for any material thing we are asking somebody for physical help that's allowed you go to a doctor you ask for his help you go to a, a consultant you ask for his help that's all okay but this help nasta'in specially we are telling allah that only you can help us without any means in this world this is like the the help from ghaib from allah which we can ask from nobody else ihdina ihdi means guide na means us you've already done it ihdina guide us as sirat al mustaqim sirat means path or way and mustaqim means the straight 
the straight path which takes you to Allah. So remember, there are many paths that are taking you to Allah, but there is only one straight path. Everybody says, oh, it is between me and Allah. I can go to Allah from whatever path I wish. This has become really common today. But no, Allah has prescribed certain ways of doing certain things. And these have been shown us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa If a way is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it is the sunnah way, then you are 100% sure that this is the right way. If you are following somebody else, be it your parents, be it your uncles, your aunties, your neighbors, your family, your best friend, even some of the Malvis or Sufis or Sheikhs or whoever they call them, the peers, they may not be the right way. The right way, the Surat Mustaqim, is to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet to reach to Allah. So every day we are making this dua at least 17 times in our prayers every day oh Allah please guide us to the path the straight path and then Allah further clarifies it for us Alladina of those who an'amta you bestowed favor you bestowed favor alayhim now alayhim is two words Allah and whom when you combine them Allah and whom it becomes alayhim so upon them so who is Allah talking about? It is not given in Surah Fatiha. But elsewhere in the Quran, Allah explains it. Who are these people? These are the prophets. These are the martyrs. These are the uh, Siddiqun. And these are the Salihun. So those people who are truthful, those people who were the prophets, those people who were the martyrs, and those people who did the righteous deeds. Now they are already gone. Now if we make our ideals, our role models as somebody. I may see somebody over here and I may say, oh, I want to be like him. Don't ever say that. The scholars say, don't say that. We don't know what's going to happen to this person. Is he going to die as a Muslim? Is he going to, God forbid, become a, an apostate? Is he going to do something wrong? Nobody should be our ideal, our role model in this dunya except the Prophet Wasallam. And Allah said, Ibrahim Wasallam." Take his way, adopt his way, and make the Prophet ﷺ your role model. Allah says, he's the best role model for you. And then Allah says, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين غير means not, and مغضوب means who earned your anger. مغضوب means it's a noun, the person who is earning the anger. Allah is not angry on somebody. Some people translate it, who Allah is angry. No, it's not Allah's anger. It is those who bring upon themselves Allah's anger. مغضوب. And then alayhim, upon themselves, again, wala and not, you've done these words, ضالين, the people who go astray. So these, in some of the tafasir, it says that the maghdub are those who are the Jews because they knew everything and they brought the wrath of Allah upon themselves. And the dhalin are those who, who just went astray like the Christians. We don't have to get into this. We just want to make dua, oh Allah, don't make us from any of the dhalin and any of the maghdub. That's it, enough for us. This is enough for us. So let's go. So this was the first dua. The second dua is, I like this dua very much. It is, I don't know whether everybody says this or not every day because this is not one of those common dua, Rabbana Atina like dua. But it is a beautiful dua. Can anybody tell me whose dua it is? Rabbi inni lima anzalta illayya min khairin faqir. Musa alayhi salam. It is for every good and any good. Musa alayhi salam, you know what time, at what time he made this dua, he, he had killed a person unintentionally, right? He, he boxed him and he got killed. So now he, the person comes from far away and he says, people are after you, they may just, you know, punish you, execute you, whatever, so just run away. So he's run away, running away towards Median and on his way he meets these two girls who are trying to feed their cattle but they can't they feed their sheep but they can't because there are too many men standing over there Musa alayhi salam goes and helps these girls and then after helping these girls he did what did he do he did a good deed he helped the girls now he's so tired he's scared he's hungry he's thirsty he's exhausted he comes and he lies down and he makes this dua Rabbi inni oh my lord now look at the word for word translation my lord indeed I am is inna plus e indeed i am lima for what or whatever 
anzalta you send down ilayya to me whatever you send to me whatever min of khairin khair means good over here anything good you give me faqir i am in need of it i am a faqir i am a beggar i am poor i need it it's such a short dua what did he get after this he is so humble he is so humble he is making this dua as a beggar and he didn't expect right then he makes this dua and this lady comes walking and says my father wants to talk to you his life changed his life changed no more fear no more hunger no more thirst gets a beautiful wife gets a house and like a house to stay there for at least 8 years it could be 8 it could be 10 allah gave him everything we should try to make this dua be humble become a faqir become a beggar to allah and ask allah oh allah whatever you send down to me i am in need of it next dua the most common dua that we make every day for the best in both worlds remember allah subhanahu wa taala says those who make dua just before this aya allah says those who make dua for the dunya they will get things in the dunya you will get a car you will get a house you will get a big business you will get everything you want but if you don't want the akhira you will not get anything in the akhira allah says there will not be any portion for you in the akhira so what does allah say ask for both worlds ask for the best in both worlds and this is the very comprehensive dua which is it is it's general it covers everything rabbana our lord atina give us fi in dunya in this world hasana some people say like if you translate in urdu they will say give us neki in this dunya okay and that how do you give neki in the akhira so that's not a correct translation you don't want neki in the akhira you want the reward of that neki in the akhira so now it is rabbana our lord give us fit dunya in the world hasana as i said what is hasana it means excellence we did this before right hasana means excellent so give us the excellent things in this dunya the best in this dunya wa fil akhirah and in the akhirah in the hereafter hasana the best so give us the best in this dunya for everything it's not like some people say oh we should not take the best in this dunya i've seen people saying we should not have pomegranate we should not not have grapes in this dunya because allah is going to give us in the akhirah no no i don't want to take this because allah will give us in the akhirah did allah ever say don't have this don't have that only the haram things are a few so have enjoy allah is blessing us with with things have those things enjoy yourselves wear good clothes eat good food don't don't is don't do israf that's it So Allah is say, Allah is teaching us this dua to oh Allah give us the best in this dunya and best in the akhirah and again it's a jamia dua where Allah is saying waqina and protect us azab annar from the punishment of the hell fire from the punishment of the hell fire what else do we want if we make this dua every single day we've covered everything we've covered everything literally the best in this dunya and the best in the akhirah even if we don't know any other dua just make this dua next is for prime property in prime location we already did this right we did this a few times rabbi bni li indaka baitan fil janna oh lord build me build for me near you a house in paradise whose dua was it the firaun's wife's dua rabbi my lord she is not saying our lord see the difference see the difference we say rabbana it means our lord like musa alaihi salam he said rabbi Asia is also saying rabbi my lord my lord ibni build me li for me in the ka near you prime prime location baitan a house fil janna in paradise and like i said before that the scholar say she was the wisest woman on earth because she asked for the best thing that you could get in the akhira we are struggling here to get prime property in beverly hills and bel air and stuff and allah she got the best in the akhirah and allah is giving it to her because allah said it in the quran she asked me and she she was living in a palace she was a queen but still she is asking for that for seeking forgiveness there are many duas for seeking forgiveness the easiest one that i find is rabbi inni walam tu nafsi fawfirli again whose dua is it hmm 
not Yunus alayhi salam, not Adam alayhi salam. Come on, come on, whose dua is it? Musa alayhi salam again, when Musa alayhi salam boxed the guy and he died and then he said, because he said this is the amal of shaitan. This is the amal of shaitan and at once when any prophet made, they won't sin. He didn't do it deliberately, but when any of the prophets made a slight mistake, a slight error, they would at once ask for forgiveness. This should be our attitude. This should be our behavior. This should be our conduct. We make a slight mistake and at once we should just seek forgiveness. Rabbi inni zhulamtu. My Lord, indeed I zhulamtu, I have wrong. Take the blame on yourself. Accept what you did. Normally what we say, oh, it was the shaitan who made me do it. You know, okay, did the shaitan take your hand and make you do the things? No, the shaitan cannot do that. He has no authority to do this. Allah says in the Quran that shaitan has no authority over you. He can put the whispers in your heart. He can just tempt you. But it is your own action. So, Rabbi, my Lord, indeed I, Zualamtu, I have wronged nafsi myself. Faghfir li. Faghfir, so forgive li me. Now, somebody was asking me about this dua. If you don't know the translation, somebody said, So I'm reading this dua, Rabbi inni Zualamtu nafsi faghfir li faghfar Allah. What does it mean? Faghfar Allah. It means, and so Allah forgave him. So you're also saying, and Allah forgave him. That's not part of the dua. The dua ends here. And then Allah says, and then Allah forgave him. Allah forgave whom? Musa alayhi salam. So we have to know the words. Dua also, Allah says, don't say things that you don't understand. Then again, seeking forgiveness, so a little bit of longer duas. Now this is the dua of whom? You just said? Adam alayhi salam. This is the dua Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, both of them. And that is why it's not Rabbi, it's Rabbana zhulamna anfusana. It is for two people. And like for the dual, you have dual for the, for the, uh, for the uh, third person and for the second person, but not for the first person. For the first person, it is ana and nahnu. And na and e. So the dua is Rabbana, our Lord, zhulamna, we have wronged, anfusana, ourselves, wa in. And if, illam, and if not, taghfir, you forgive lana, us, watarhamna, and you have mercy upon us, lana kunanna, lana kunanna So, la, like I told you, la means surely, certainly, lana kunanna, we will be min from the losers, khasirin. Look at the beautiful dua. Allah says that he taught Adam alayhi salam to make this dua. This is the tawbah that Allah taught Adam alayhi salam and his wife to make. After committing what? Eating from the forbidden tree. What was it? Just one fruit, one whatever. We don't say it was an apple or a grain because we don't know. It was the forbidden tree. Do we do that? We do something forbidden. Do we do forbidden things? Any, do we do forbidden things or no? Dr. Sana, do we do forbidden things? All of us. So when we do these forbidden things, do we always say? We always say? No. We should always, as soon as we did, Allah says, whenever you do something bad, cover it up with a good deed. Make tawbah, do istighfar, give some charity, just make dua. Oh Allah, please forgive me and then don't, don't go back to it. So our Lord, we have wronged ourselves and if you do not forgive us, if you do not forgive us then and have mercy on us, then surely we will be from among the losers. So let's not be from among the losers. Again, another one for seeking forgiveness and this is especially for our israf, for our excesses. Rabbana ghfir lana zunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al kafirin. Rabbana, our Lord, ighfir, forgive lana as dhunubana, our sins. Now it's specifically sins. No mistakes, no nothing, it's sins. What is a sin? That you do deliberately, with intention. So this is our sins, but israfana and our excesses. 
we go out of limits we cross the boundaries so whenever we do any israf anything let us not do it in the first place if we happen to do we are human beings we make mistakes all the time we sin all the time so we say oh allah please forgive us oh our lord please forgive us for our sins and our excesses fi amrina fi means in amrina amr means an affair so any affair anything that we do in amrina in our affairs wa and thabbit make firm aqdamana aqdam is the is the plural of qadam our feet <coughs> make firm our feet one sorna and help us gain victory nasara yansuru also means to help and nasara also means to gain victory so one sorna and give us victory help us to gain victory alal qaumil kafirin over the people who are disbelievers seeking forgiveness for ourselves our parents and all believers so this is a more jame more comprehensive dua include it in your prayers once you do your prayer you do your your atahiyat you sitting in tashahud do your atihad atahiyat then you do your uh, uh, salutations to the prophet durood and then you say these duas so these duas these are masnoon duas these are from the quran rabbana ghfirli our lord forgive me rabbana ghfirli wali walidayya and my parents both parents and forgive my parents look we have to ask forgiveness for our parents we have to ask forgiveness for even if they were saints even if they were the best of the people we still it is our duty allah teaches us otherwise allah won't say this before we make dua for our children what do we make dua first for our children he graduates from mit from stanford from this from that from harvard make dua for your parents first and they only need forgiveness they only need they need our company they need our companionship they need our help they need our presence and then what do they need they need the dua for forgiveness tell your children to make this dua for you whether you are alive or you are after you die just tell them rabbana ghfirli our lord forgive me wali walidayya and my parents walil mu'minina and the mu'minin and the mu'minat like all the believers i told you like when you say mu'minin it includes men and women both if you are exclusively talking about women then it's mu'minat so mu'minin you know all these words the believers yawma on the day yaqumul hisab what is yaqum yaqum means something that will be established that will stand on the, when it will come what hisab the hisab kitab the reckoning when we get the accounts so on that day we need this forgiveness not for us only for us for our parents for all the muslims so when you make dua i don't know whether you do it this way or not maybe you do it better than this but it's like my style i make dua for those believers the muslimin muslimat the mu'minin mu'minat who have already passed i make dua for their forgiveness and then i say and those who are with me and who are going to be after us give give them the best so i think this is a very comprehensive dua for everyone each and every muslim who has gone before us who are with us and who will be coming after us and for every muslim that you make dua you know what happens would you know what happens the angel comes and says amin and says same for you so you get thawab for making dua for all the muslims who have come from day one and will be there for isn't that that really good it's bonus it's bonus then the best dua for the parents is rabbi irhamhuma kama rabbayani saghira we already dealt with this in the previous class rabbi my lord again it is closeness to allah rabbi my lord rabbi irhamhuma have mercy on huma both of them my both parents kama just like they or as they rabbayani they cherished me saghira when i was young this is the best dua that Allah has told us to make for our parents and before that Allah says spread your wings of humility to them and then Allah says talk to them in qawlan ma'rufa qawlan karima talk to them kindly nicely sometimes we make dua for them but we don't talk to them nicely so that is very important and again in the hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says who is the most deserving of your companionship i'm not saying men or women i'm just saying that your parents of course mother comes first because mother bears the child in the womb she take care 
uh, nurses the child and then raises the child more than the father can do. The father is the one, of course, who is providing the means after Allah provides him, but um, it is the mother who really needs the companionship of the children. So, Rabbir Hamhuma Kamar Rabbayani Sagira, make this a, a habit in these nights of Qadr. When you are in the sujood, make this dua, especially for the parents. When you have said, Subhana Rabbi Allah, Subhana Rabbi Allah, Subhana Rabbi Allah, the best dua is, like we said last time, Allahumma inna ka afuun tu hibbu lafwa faafu anna or faafu anni, and then say, Rabbir Hamhuma Kamar Rabbayani Sagira. You can also say, Rabbi ibn li in the kabaitan fil jannah. For seeking the pleasure of Allah. This is a dua which I think, um, I don't know, but most of the people have not memorized this dua. Myself, I haven't memorized this dua. I never thought that this dua was so important and so good until now when I was researching and searching the duas, it struck me. Just listen to the wordings. It is for seeking the pleasure of Allah. How do we know? Rabbi, my Lord, awzi'ani, enable me. Enable me on that ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya. Ashkur, yani I be grateful. Give me the capacity. Enable me. Give me the means that I am grateful ni'mataka for your favor. Allati, that which an'amta you have bestowed alayya upon me. The favor that you have done upon me. Wa ala walidayya. And upon my parents. And upon my parents. وَأَنْ amala And that I do, I do, I perform صَالِحًا Righteous deeds. I perform righteous deeds. تَرْضَاهُ تَرْضَى Means which pleases you, which makes you happy. وَأَسْلِحْ And make me righteous. Li for me. And, and make righteous for me. فِي ذُرِّيَتِي Among my offspring. Among my children. Comprehensive dua again. Give me the ability, enable me to be grateful to you. Allah loves the grateful. And Allah says, if you are grateful, I give you more. وَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And he didn't say what. He didn't say what he will give more. Azi, he said, I will just increase for you in everything. Allah left it open. So make me do the things, make me grateful to you, and make me do the things, the righteous deeds, which will please you. Wa asli and make righteous for me among my offspring, among my children. In the in me, indeed, I tub to, I have repented. Ilaika to you. Again, ilaika is two words, ila plus ka. Like I said, ala plus hum, it became alayhim. This is ila plus ka, it becomes ilaika. To you, wa inni min al muslimin, and that indeed I am of those who, muslimin means Muslim, and muslimin also means those who submit. And that's why the name Muslim. So make me of those who submit. If we submit to Allah, what's going to happen? Allah is going to be pleased with us. After this ayah, I just put a note over here. After this ayah, the very next ayah, this was 46.15. In 46.16, Allah says, about these people, those are the ones from whom we will accept the best of what they did and overlook their evil deeds. They will be among the dwellers of paradise, a promise of truth which they had been promised. Did you notice something over here? Somebody tell me what was something that you noticed specifically? Something. Maybe three things. If you tell me one, that's. One is overcome their bad deeds. Overcome. Another one? Any other point? Three points over here. You want to make it bigger? Any one point? Did you notice Allah says, we will accept the best of what they did? What does it mean? If I do in one day 20 things, which are good, but one of them is the best, Allah will, you know how the teachers, they curve, they curve, and they say, we'll, we'll give you marks based on your best results. This is what Allah is going to do. So if I did 10 things good today, and out of those 10 things, one was the best. I got 9 over 10 in that. So Allah is going to, in the others, I got 2, 3, 4, 5. So Allah is going to judge me by the 9 over 10. So all my deeds become good. So this is like, it is beyond our understanding. 
Allah is going to accept the best of what we did. The best of what we did. And he will overlook, like uh, Sabah said, overlook their evil deeds. Their evil deeds will be overlooked. And then one thing, he will accept. Number one, he will accept. He has said that he is going to accept our deeds. One, his acceptance. Number two is the giving the best, curving it, rounding it to the best. Number three is overlooking the evil deeds. And then Allah is saying that I will fulfill my promise. They will be the dwellers of paradise. And this is a promise of truth, which they had been promised. What else do you want? And this dua I had been neglecting all my life. How do you feel? Were you saying this dua? We never thought of it. You know. That's why I chose it. I chose it and I added it. Inshallah we are going to memorize this and then try to say it every day. For seeking firmness of the heart. This dua normally everybody reads, it's quite common. Rabbana la tuzdeh qulubana ba'da ith hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab. Rabbana, our Lord, la, not, la means Lord, but we are asking Allah, so we are saying let not tuzdeh. Tuzdeh comes from the word zayr. Zayr means a deviation. So tuzdeh, let not deviate qulubana, qulub is the plural of qalb, our hearts, na means our, Qulubana means our hearts. O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, let not deviate our hearts. Bada, you've done this after, is, you've done this when, most of the words you've done. Rabbana la toze qulubana bada is hadaitana. Hada means guidance. Hadaita, you guided. Na means us after you have guided us. Once we are in guidance, it is we should be sticking to that guidance. We should be steadfast. We should be firm. But what happens? We come into guidance and then the shaitan, the khannas, he's always there. He comes, he whispers, he tempts and we go astray. Then we go astray for a little while. We come back. Alhamdulillah, we come back. Some people may never come back. Once they go astray, they may apostate. They may just go away from deen. They may go to the other extreme. So let us always ask Allah for, for guidance and for firmness. So we seek Allah, we seek from Allah to keep our hearts firm and to save us, to protect us from being deviated. So our Lord, let not deviate our hearts after you have guided us and grant us. Hub is a word which Allah uses when he gifts somebody. Like hiba, hiba means a gift. So when you gift somebody, you've noticed that every time Allah talks about giving a child to any prophet, he says, wahablan, I, I, I grant it. Wahaba, 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 and he granted, he, gra he gifted, he gifted, he gifted. So hab is grant us or gift us. Milla dunka from yourself. This is a gift from Allah that you give us from yourself, rahma, mercy. Innaka antal wahab. Indeed, you are the bestower, or you are the gifter, or you are the giver. You are the only one who can give it to us. This mercy, this steadfastness, this not getting deviated, only Allah can give us. We don't have that capability. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot protect ourselves. Again, another dua for seeking steadfastness in prayer for yourself and for your children. This is also a beautiful dua. Try to put it in your salah after durood. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Rabbana khfilli. We are doing that. We did that. Rabbana khfilli wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumul hisab. This all comes together. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salah. Rabbi, my Lord, ajalni, make me muqeema and establisher of salah, of prayer. Make me, like prayer is not to be done once. Okay, I say my prayers. And you know, so all these qazai, umri thing that comes in today nowadays in WhatsApp, pray these two rakahs on this last Friday and uh, put in this, 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 that, make this dua and all the so many years, 80 years or 100 years of salah that you didn't make, it will be made up by these two rakahs. Can you believe this? I mean, can you believe Allah is going to do this? You don't pray at all. You be negligent. You ignore the prayers. And Allah says, Allah says very clearly, It is woe to those Muslims, destruction to those, uh, those, uh, those people who pray. Why is Allah saying destruction to those people who pray? 
because hum an salatihim sahun that they are negligent of their prayer they forget their prayer they don't pray their prayers properly if we have neglected our prayers and now we are doing these two rakahs in ramadan on a friday and we expect that now we don't want to do any more prayers there's another one i heard just two days ago or three days ago somebody said somebody went for hajj and they said you pray these i don't know how many 80 salahs or whatever in such and such place in such and such way and then you are done for life so he comes back and he's telling his family i'm done for life no more prayers for me did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stop praying until the last uh, stop praying any day didn't he pray until the last day of his life he did so why do we just see these whatsapp and stuff it's just it's devastating establishing to be qayyam to be qayyam to exactly exactly yeah yeah every every your wudu your paki your niya your everything it is like establish not just praying the salah so everything comes in that exactly 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 yes so just make me a, an establisher establish means when you establish a business what do you do do you start a business in one day okay this is, so that's why establish means something that takes time to to establish so allah is saying that's why allah gives the choice of words rabbi jalni my lord make me an establisher of prayer make me the one who establishes prayer wa min zurriyati and for my offspring so do you remember what prayer was for the parents forgiveness what is for the children to make them establish prayer and when you establish prayer what happens allah says in the quran it also inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar it protects you it prevents you from indecency and evil and immorality and shamefulness so this is what happens if your salah is not stopping you from doing all those evil deeds then something is wrong with your salah then your salah is not established so this is for your children first for the parents forgiveness and for the children allah gave us the wordings rabbana wala wa taqabbal dua our lord and accept my dua our dua my supplication accept my dua we are asking allah whose dua was this by the way ibrahim alayhi salam he is so concerned he is so concerned he made the he built the kaaba with his son what else could it be what else best thing could can we ever do that never the kaaba the baitullah he's making the foundations he's making the kaaba and yet he's saying duas for his children that they follow the same they don't deviate they don't go away from prayers he's concerned about them and he's saying oh allah accept my supplication and we we do something and we say oh allah must accept it you know we are making this dua allah has to accept it why not i made the dua i made the dua sincerely allah has to accept it for seeking patience and submission rabbana afrigh alaina sabra wa tawaffana muslimin rabbana our lord afrigh pour alaina upon us again it's ala plus na alaina ala plus na upon us sabran sabr is patience wa tawaffana and cause us to die cause us to die muslimin as muslims or in submission in a state of submission allah says and do not die except in the state of submission what does it mean what does it mean that we yeah but it does it mean that you only stay a muslim by name i am a muslim so if i die i die as a muslim is that enough what does it mean it means you have to be in a state of submission in a state of obedience to allah all the time 24/7 because suppose suppose you are doing something which is going against the command of allah and you die at that the angel of death by the way his name is not israel like we think we don't know his name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us his name. The Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not give us his name that it is Israel. He gave us the name of Jibril, he gave us the name of Mikail, he gave us the name of Israfil, but he did not give us the name of Israel, okay? 
Israel is death, okay, <laughs> but we don't talk about Israel as the angel of death. Allah talks about him as Malakul Maut, as the angel of death. We should also use the same wording. So when the angel of death comes to take our lives, our soul, he is not going to wait. Okay, you finish this drama, you finish this movie, you finish your um, card game, you finish your slot machine. After that, you can make tawba and then I'll take your life. No, we may not have time for tawba. We don't know how we are going to die, where we are going to die, in what state, what condition, we don't know. So let us try, at least let us try not to do those things which are in disobedience to Allah. Because people say, oh, we'll do hajj when we'll be that old, you know. I'll take hijab when Allah gives me the tawfiq. This is a clear blame on Allah. Is Allah not giving you the tawfiq to buy one scarf? You have so many nice clothes. And then you say, I'll wear the hijab when Allah gives me the tawfiq. Allah gives the tawfiq to everybody. It's you who either take it or you don't. Allah gives guidance to everybody. It's you who accepts the guidance or you don't. And Allah says it very clearly. Guidance is accepted by those who are the muttaqin. It is guidance for the muttaqin. And then Allah describes the muttaqin. So let us all hope and pray and work towards it that when we die, inshallah, we die in a state of submission. We are Muslims, but we want to die in a state of submission. Seeking steadfastness and victory. Again, there are similar duas we just did. Rabbana, that's why I didn't want the picture, okay. Rabbana afrir alayna sabra wa sabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala qawmil kafirin. You did most of it. Rabbana, our Lord, afrir poor. Alayna is Allah plus na upon us, sabran, patience, wa sabbit and make firm aqdamana, our feet, wa ansurna and give us victory ala qawmil kafirin over the people who are disbelievers, over a nation of disbelievers. All this you've done. When you read one dua and you go word for word for one dua, now you know all those duas, inshallah. A comprehensive dua. This dua is so comprehensive. You see that all the scholars make this dua, especially on Laylatul Qadr and other times when doing qunut and whenever they get the chance. And again, this is part of a of this is like Surah Baqarah, ayahs number 285 and 286. So every night before going to sleep, there are certain things that we need to do. It's not fard, but it's from the sunnah that we read the ayat al-kursi. We need the ayat al-kursi and we read this Aman al-Rasulu and this dua. Aman al-Rasulu is Surah Baqarah, ayah number 285. This is 286. So we are supposed to read this before we go to sleep. And then Allah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that this is sufficient for you. If you say these two, there are others. The three kuls and other things and even like Tabarak uh, uh, Surah Mulk. But if you say these two, this, these are sufficient. So since the first one is not a dua, and we 285 and we were concentrating only on duas in this class so i selected the second part verse 286 let me just go directly to word for word rabbana our lord la tu akhidna la means not or do not tu akhidna it means take us or seize us or hold us akhada ya khuzu means to hold to take so when you say to akhidna do not you take us do not you hold us do not you seize us for what for punishment in if nasina we forget if we forget oh allah don't seize us don't take us to account don't punish us if we forget or akhtuanna or we make a mistake khata like khata is a mistake now this is not deliberate sinning this is not deliberate sinning. Even if we forget or we make a mistake, oh our Lord, do not seize us for that. Rabbana, our Lord, wala tahmil alayna. And la, do not tahmil. Tahmil comes from hamal. Hamal means to carry something. And like we say, the a pregnant woman is hamila. She's carrying a baby. So hamal means to carry or to lay a burden. So uh, we are asking Allah, oh Allah, do not you lay alayna upon us. Allah plus na again upon us. Do not lay a burden on, on us. Isran, a burden. Do not lay upon us a burden. Kama, 
like that which or like what again two words i said when you use ka and ma it means like what or like that which hamaltahu hamalta means you laid who means it you laid it ala upon alladhina those who min qablina you did min qabl min qabl means before and na means us min qablina means before us oh allah please don't lay a burden on us just like you laid a burden on the people who were before us rabbana our lord wala and do not to hamilna you lay upon us ma that which la no taqat lana taqa means taqat or strength lana we have oh allah please do not lay us upon uh, lay upon us a burden for which we don't have any strength to bear it bihi for it wafu and pardon again last time we did wafu and remember we said allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbu alafwa fa'fuwanna and we said what's the difference between ighfir and what's the difference between seeking forgiveness and seeking pardoning there was a difference when you ask for istighfar when you are asking for forgiveness that sin will be inshallah forgiven if allah wills he will forgive the sin but that sin is still written in our book of deeds when we go in the akhirah we will not get the punishment but the sin is still there you can see it but when you say wa fu anna it means that oh allah please pardon it please forgive that sin and please erase it remove it delete it from our book of deeds So it's much more than that. So Allah, so we are asking, wafwana wafillana. Both, O oh Allah, please pardon us and please forgive us. Warhamna and have mercy upon us. Anta, you are Maulana. You are our Maulana. You are our protector. You are our guardian. We say Maulana to a lot of Maulanas in Pakistan. Okay, they are not Maulana. Okay, you can say them Maulvi. That is okay. But we keep on saying Maulana, Maulana, and it's like sometimes it feels like our Maulana is only Allah. It's, there's nothing wrong with it in our language, but if you think about it deeply, then our Allah is our protector. Fun Surna again. So gave us victory. Help us. to gain victory alal qaumil kafirin over the people disbelievers we've been saying that again and again kafirin 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 who are the kafirin who kafara means to cover something to conceal something or to be ungrateful all these things come under kafara it's also hide it's also covering so a kafir is not necessarily the person who has not learned about islam he doesn't know about islam he lives somewhere in papua new guinea or the bermudas or wherever he lives somewhere on timbuktu and he hasn't heard about islam i think there's now no place where nobody's heard about islam but even then if he is not bent upon denying islam or he is not bent upon he is accepting disbelief then he is not from among those allah will judge from them but those who are st- like stubbornly arrogantly they are kufar are we talking about those people and those who fight us specially because when we want victory we want victory it means they are fighting us they are going against us they are harassing us they are troubling us so then only we say fansurna alal qaumil kafirin you can also say fansurna alal qaumil zalimin fansurna alal qaumil kafirin for seeking righteous children here now this is special dua for the children and allah again rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyyatina qurrata ayun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama rabbana our lord hab again the same word grant us gift us lana us min azwajina from our wives from uh, not from other people's wives from your own wives allah is saying okay so give give from our wives wa zurriyatina and uh, yes so this for only men is it wife azwaj means spouse spouse, spouse. Yeah, I, it's it just said wives. I forgot to change it to spouse. I'll change it to spouse. But this was this dua was actually in the Quran. This dua was made by Ibrahim alayhi salam, and that's why in the Quran we don't change the duas. We can make duas uh, the 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 masnoon duas from the sunnah. And this dua just because it was Ibrahim alayhi salam, therefore the translation is wives. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
course of course sisters can make all the duas that the men can make and i like i said the men can also make the dua rabbibni li in the kabaitan fil janna even the men are allowed to stay in jamna janna and have a prime property over there okay the men will be allowed inshallah yeah, in urdu yeah like in urdu maybe don't say azwaj in in when we translate bbi get there we said normally yeah so when they translate the translation is is horrendous um sometimes it takes you out of context altogether so that's why i insist again and again again and again to all my students don't don't depend on translations learn arabic learn the quran learn the context go to several translations you will see the difference you will yourself come and nowadays every tom dick and harry is having his own translation they are changing the, the context as well so it's very scary so give from our spouses and our and our offspring comfort of our eyes qurrata ayun the comfort of our eyes waj'alna and make us lil muttaqina imama make us imams make us leaders make us examples doesn't everybody doesn't have to be an imam of a masjid it's like make us leaders make us the people who will guide others dr sana is not an imam but he's more than an imam for us he gives lectures day and night and he make does khutbas all the time so last night it was you right okay i missed it <laughs> and make us the examples the role models of the god fearing why is it only for the lil muttaqin imam for the muttaqin because only they are the people who will accept guidance they are the people who are conscious of allah who fear allah who want to protect themselves so if there is somebody as an imam as a guide as a role model as an example for us at that time he is telling us something who will accept only those people who will want to accept right So this is a beautiful dua make it it doesn't mean that your children will become imams of the mosques but it means really something because when i was ever since i was young i i used to make this dua and um, my sister asked me my sister said so you were making this dua that your ch- children become hufaz and your children be- ever since like i remember i was ma- i didn't even have children from that time i was, I was making this dua and then i said i'm making dua i don't know when it's going to come but alhamdulillah alhamdulillah the time came and my children became all of them alhamdulillah they became hufaz and then what happened was they are also leading they are role models for others they are leading others in prayers also so i said they don't have to become the imam of the masjid not necessarily but now i feel like this dua was so important so important in my life alhamdulillah alhamdulillah i can't thank allah enough even if i'm nobody can thank allah enough because that somebody again i can come to one fiki question that somebody said we should make two rakahs uh, nafal of shukrana every day that's the pakistani concept and i started doing that you know every day two rakahs just shukri allah your shukr and all that and then i looked into the rulings by the scholars and they said this is not from the sunna to make two rakahs nafal specially for shukrana why because if you make two rakahs nafal you are limiting it is allah's look at allah what allah is doing for us all the time ever since not even we were born and it will go until after we were we will be in the akhirah how can we say two rakats and say shukrana it will be limiting our shukr so whenever you what is the what was the sunna you hear something good any good news go into sujood sujood is shukr that's what you do you do shukr of allah all the time with your hands oh allah it doesn't mean don't be grateful to allah it means be grateful to allah make me a neighbor auzaini auzaini an ashkura nematak give me the ability to make shukar of you but this two rakat i'm just saying this two rakat that we do this is not from the sunna this is not from the sunna i'm not saying don't make shukar don't take me wrong make shukar of allah all the time make shukar of allah whenever you are lying you are sleeping you are awake you are whatever all the time alhamdulillah 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 shukr of allah after everything and when you hear the, hear a good news just go into sujood sujood of shukr but this special two rakats that is not from the sunna for seeking help in distress la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minaz zalimin i can bet every one of you knows that right you know so less so how many times are you supposed to recite this 
come on, come on. Ha, 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 125,000 times. Dr. Sana, how many times do you recite? You have to have all those beads. The beads and you have something else. You need something else. Do you know that? Do you know that? Have you heard about it? No, 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 not only beads. You, know, you didn't hear about that? Okay, let me just tell you. I'll take two more minutes. It's in California. Somebody invited some people for this Aibe Karima Khatam, 1,25,000 times. Number one, it is not 125,000 times. We don't know how many times Yunus you know, Salaam said it. There is no count to it. You can, and then, okay, so many things related to it. Don't say it alone because it is Jalali. That is totally wrong. You can say it alone whenever you want to. Don't count. Don't make it 125,000. There is nothing in the sunnah which says do more than 100 times. So just take it as you want to do it maximum 100 times. You're going to do it 10 times, 2 times, even months. Just say it because in distress, you need this dua. It will remove, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this dua will remove the distress from you. It will remove the calamity. You are asking Allah, how many days was Yunus Sallallahu in the belly of the whale? He didn't say it 100, 101 like and 25,000 times. But another thing I heard just recently, that there was a khatam at somebody's house in here in Southern California, and they said um, that you should have water with it, number one. You should have water with it because it was in the sea. So they kept water with it. And then they said, uh, because this ayah, this ayah is very jalali, so it's, it's, uh, the wrath of Allah comes with it. So you have to cool things down. So they put ice in the water. <laughs> and, and then everybody was, I forgot even, I mean, I can't even remember. When I hear such things, I just boil. So, so then when you put the hands in the, I think the beads in the water so that they become cool and the jalal goes away and all that. I think it's like, I even forgot, sorry. But it was something really, really weird. It had nothing to do with the sunnah, nothing to do with Islam. Yeah, yeah, he has his ways. And he sits, he says, I will sit, I will come from the right, I will come from the left, I will come from the front and come from behind, and I will lead astray your people. So we say this, la ilaha illa ant. There is none, I said ilah, I don't like the word, I don't like to use the word God. Because when you say there is no God except you, there are so many gods around for all the other people, right? So we say there is no one worthy of worship except you. Ilah means somebody you worship. It's a deity. So a deity, a worthy of worship is who? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illa anta. There is none worthy of worship except you. Subhanak. And like I don't know if I said before in this class, that when I say subhanaka, I don't say glory be to you. What does it mean, glory be to you? It's like, okay, you are exalted, you are this, you are that. It means you are perfect. You are perfect. You have no weakness in you. You have no shortcoming in you. You are just perfect. So whenever I translate my students in my class, if they say glory be to you, they'll be out. Like I heard Dr. Sana says I'm very strict. I don't know, I heard that. Did you say that? You are very strict. Okay. <laughs> because I heard that. So, so, so Subhanaka, you are perfect. In me, indeed I, Kuntu, I have been. Mina Zawali mean of the wrongdoers. If you committed something wrong, even if you did not commit something wrong that you know of, if a calamity comes to you, if a hardship strikes you, you just know that you have to do istighfar. This is one way of doing istighfar. Oh Allah, you are perfect. You will not commit any mistakes. You don't have any shortcomings. I indeed, I am full of mistakes. I am the wrongdoer. And you know what Allah says in the Quran after this? After says, Allah says, anybody knows? Anybody knows? Allah says, if Yunus alayhi salam had not done this, he would have remained in the belly of the whale until resurrection. He says it. It's in the Quran. I should have put it here. Because I'm not a hafiza, so I don't know the exact wording. But he said, if he hadn't done this, he would have remained in the belly until then. Wrongdoers. Oppressor. oppressor, wrongdoers for darkness. You're doing it to yourself. In me kuntu, I am of the wrongdoers. I wronged myself. No. Even before that, in me nafsi, zulman, 
fagfili. Remember, in that you can also uh, add. I forgot to say, inni zulamtu nafsi zulman kathira, fagfili. Kathira a lot. Okay, inni zulamtu nafsi zulman kathira fagfili, but not fagfara Allah. Okay, that is not part of the dua. Okay, seeking refuge from evil suggestions of the devil. Number one, we always say, "Auzu billahi min al-shaytani rajim." Any time. Any time you feel angry, you feel you are being tempted by the shaitan, the best and the easiest way everybody knows, even a child knows to say, "Auzu billahi min shaitani rajim." In our country, somehow they say, if you get angry, you must say, "La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah." That's not the correct thing to say. So, "La hawla wa la quwwata." No, "La hawla wa la quwwata" means there is no movement and there is no power except Allah. And of course, the shaitan doesn't have the power to do anything if Allah does not permit him. That is sight. But the actual thing is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said: If you get angry, seek refuge from the shaitan. It is the shaitan who is making you angry. Isn't anger haram? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it's haram. Don't get angry. In one hadith, he is just saying, "Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry." Three times. What does it mean? Emphasis. Taqid. Don't get angry. So whenever the first thing is "Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim," everybody knows that. Second is "Rabbi auzu bika min hamazati shayatim." So you are seeking refuge from all the shayatim, from the whispers of the shayatim, from the evil suggestions of the shayatim. Rabbi, my Lord, auzu, I seek. If you want it for somebody else, for everybody, nauzu. Like I said, when the shuyuk say the dua, they say nauzu, auzu. Bika, your, uh, yeah, auzu bika. I seek your protection. Min, what's happening here? Min from the hamazat, from the evil suggestions of the shayatin of the devils. Make this dua. Make it regularly. It's a very good dua after every prayer. Just say it. It's not as from the sunnah to say it after prayer, but make it a habit. Then for seeking facilitation of affairs, Rabbana atina mil ladun ka rahma wa hayi lana min amrina rashada. Anybody knows which dua? Surah Kahf. Because you saw eighteen ten, or did you know it? You saw eighteen. No, but eighteen is given there. Okay. So who was saying this? Who made this dua? Who were in the cave, right? Okay. So those are the people, the ashabul ashab ashabul kahf, who said, "Rabbana, our Lord, Atina, grant us, give us mil ladunka from yourself, rahma, mercy, wahayi, and make it easy, facilitate lana for us min amrina of our affair, rashada." You say, like we say, Khulfai Rashidin. They were rightly guided. So um, these people are saying, make it rightly. Make it in the best way for us. Solve this affair for us. Make it easy for us. Facilitate it is for us in the best way, in the right way. Then for reliance or tawakkul on Allah and turning to Allah in repentance. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka almasir. Three duas in one. Rabbana, our Lord, alayka tawakkalna. Again, this is Allah plus ka. Alaika upon you, tawakkalna. We put our trust. We rely. Wa ilaika, wa ilaika. This is ila plus ka. And to you, anabna. We turn in repentance. When we say munib or anabna or to turning, when we turn to Allah, we turn to Allah in repentance. Remember, and it is always ilaika. This is a very fine point. We say ilaika anabna. We turn in repentance to you. But sometimes you read in the Quran, and Allah turns upon you. What does it mean? Is Allah seeking re repentance? Now, the Billah. Allah is accepting your repentance. Allah is turning towards you to accept, and that's why then it is not ilaika; it is alaika, ilaika and alaika to you and upon you. That's the difference. So whenever you see, because sometimes you are reading and you say. Like, Reading fast and not word for word, you may say Allah is repenting. Allah is turning to us. Allah is turning to accept our repentance upon us. Wa ilayka al masir and ilayka and to you al masir. Masir means the return or the destination. We will be returning to Allah. Does somebody 
know what time it is. I promised you I would give a break. OK, we still have time. Yeah, it's OK. So for putting your trust in Allah again, there is, if nobody needs a break, we can just continue, right? You need a break? How many hands? You need a break? Nobody, OK. For putting your trust in Allah again, there is this one that we say all the time, Hasbi Allahu. Which surah is this? Tawbah, the last ayah. Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illahu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arshil azim. Hasbiya. Hasbi means sufficient is for me. Allah, Allah is sufficient for me. La ilaha illahu. There is no deity worthy of worship except he. Alayhi upon, again this is Allah plus who. The who becomes he. So alayhi upon him tawakkaltu. I put my trust. I rely. Wahua and he is, now you've done all these words. Rabbu is the Lord of the Arsh, of the throne, Azweem the Great. Why there is Al Arsh and Al Azweem? When you talk about any noun, again I'm going to grammar, but it's okay. When you talk about any noun and when you talk about an adjective with the noun, then they have to match. So you say Al Arsh, then you say Al Azweem. Then you are, it's, it has to match. You won't say Al Arsh, Azweem. Remember that. That is one grammar rule. Okay, never mind. Forgive me. <laughs> so this is the longer dua. There is another dua, that, or maybe same uh, length, but uh, a lot of people make that dua. It's very easy. Hasbi Allahu wa ni'm al wakil, or Hasbun Allahu wa ni'm al wakil, ni'm al mola wa ni'm al nasir, or Tawakkal tu Allahi wa kafa billahi wakila. Tawakkal tu Allahi wa kafa billahi wakila. Hasbi Allahu. Naim al mola wa naim al wakil. Okay? For seeking increase in knowledge every day, I think we must all do that because sometimes we think we have a lot of knowledge. Believe me, when I started my Sharia course, um, how many years ago? I mean, maybe 8, 19, 20 years ago, I don't remember. So when I started my Sharia course, I thought I know a lot. I teach. I have been teaching Quran for so many years. I have been teaching Tafsir and I have read so many books on. Islam and I have been continuously doing this and that. When I started, I came to know I barely knew anything. I barely knew anything. After I finished the Sharia course, even then I feel I could just barely put my fingertips in that knowledge. Knowledge is so vast. It's not like the dunya knowledge. You do five years or seven years of medical and you become an MD, like Dr. Sana, MD, okay? That's only, what, seven years, eight years, ten years? Nothing. I, but they think they are like MDs, right? Okay, sorry. <laughs> but Islamic knowledge from cradle to grave. I missed you so much, Dr. Sana. Last week you were not here. I didn't know who to pull, <laughs> whose leg to pull. <laughs> so... Huh? Ali, Ali wasn't here. Ali wasn't here. <laughs> and I said your brother was there, but I, with your brother, I'm not. I'm not so free with your brother. Like I, like so. I was like, okay, <laughs> missing Doctor Sana today. <laughs> so for seeking increase in knowledge, we always have to make this. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi zidni ilma. Oh Allah, please increase us in our knowledge. And there's also another dua of beneficial knowledge. So any knowledge that you learn, it is always beneficial. And any knowledge that you convey, remember, it's your sadaqah. You learn one word of Arabic and you convey that one word of Arabic or one word of Islamic knowledge, any knowledge, be it fiqh, be it seerah, be it Quran, whatever, and you convey it to somebody, it becomes your sadaqah jariya. Even after you die, even after I die, inshallah, it's going to be there for me. Upon boarding a vehicle, everybody knows this. You, I think you pray every day. Subhanallah, sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqarineen wa inna ila rabbina lamun qalibun. Let us go word for word for this. This is not only for a car. This is for a car, for a cycle, for a scooter, for, for a plane, for a ship, whatever. In the ship, in boat, again, there is what uh, the, the dua that um, uh, Nuh uh, salam made. So you can say that also. But when I asked the sheikh, I said, should we say that or um, should we say that? this well this is what we have been taught you can say that but this is more important because this we have been taught to say this he made that dua but this is for even in a ship any vehicle any plane anything what does it mean exactly let's look at it subhana again like i said subhana doesn't mean glory to you it actually means perfect subhana perfect is allavi you've done this allavi the one who perfect is the one who sakhara 
Sakhara means to subdue or to subject. Who can subject anything for us? Who can do it? Allah has subdued and subjected everything for the human being. We always think that we are subjected to this and the other uh, creations are free. No, Allah says in the Quran, He subjected the sun, the moon, the stars and everything for us. They are all working for us. They are not subservient, but you can say they are subjected for doing things for us. So Allah is the one who subjected lana for us or to us, hadha, this. What is this? The vehicle that you are on. And sometimes we, as human beings, we are weak, right? So we, if we are in an accident and we are saved, what do we say normally? Oh, the driver was so good, you know, he saved us. Sometimes the pilot was so good, you know, he managed to do this. Sometimes we say, oh, my husband drives so beautifully, or I drive so good, you know, I made this and I did that and I saved it. This can go into shirk, go into shirk. That's just a very fine line. You got saved by Allah and Allah made it happen through the person who was driving or who was flying the plane. So be very, very careful about using the words that we use. We have to be very, very careful. We can, even the doctors, the doctor cannot save your life. The doctor treats you. The doctor treats you. He does not cure you. Remember that. So every time say, the doctor was so good, you know, he did an amazing job. Yes, he did an amazing job, but he couldn't have saved you. If the doctor could save lives, he would save his parents. He would save spouse, or she or he would save their spouses, their children. Nobody would die. Nobody would die. But it's in Allah's hands. It can take you into shirk. So remember, perfect is the one who subjected to us this, the vehicle, and not, again, we are making it clear, Allah told, tells us to make it clear, wama and not kunna, we were of it, mukrinin. We were not capable of handling it ourselves. We were not capable of subjecting it. We were not capable of controlling it. We were not capable of saving somebody. Wa inna and indeed we ila to Rabbina, our Lord Lamun Qalibun will surely return. La means surely, remember. Surely return. We will surely be going back to Allah. There is no way. So now people think, oh, we are saying this. When we say this, when we are riding a car or whatever, we are saying, oh, we are going to return to Allah. This means we are going to die. Why are we saying this dua? It doesn't mean that. But just in case, if your death has been determined, the term of your death, of your life is over, and if you are to die in that accident, in, a, in an air crash, in whatever, then at least you are making this dua, that you are the one who subjects this. You are the one, and we are supposed to return to you. So, oh Allah, please take our lives, and this you will be dying as a Muslim, in a state of submission. Yeah. Yeah. Us. So by doing that, by getting their services, we will eventually die. Yes. This will continue to the day we will have the service, and this will discontinue at that time we will return. Right. Okay, so we finished the du'as, but uh, I have um, just a couple of more because uh, all the time we read this, this is also a du'a from Qul Audhu Bil Rabbil Falaq, Surah Falaq and Surah Nas. These are again du'as, comprehensive du'as, which the Prophet ﷺ was taught to seek refuge from a lot of things. So let us go to these. These are the last three, two du'as and one short surah. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min sharri ma khalaq wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab wa min sharri nafasati fil uqad wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad We are not going to go into the details or the tafsir of this surah but let us just go word for word. Qul, say, because it was told to the Prophet to say a'udhu, you all know, I seek bi rabbi, qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq I seek refuge bi rabbi with the lord of falaq of the daybreak, of dawn, of the daybreak, of the light, okay? Falak, min sharri ma khalaq. Min means from, shar means evil and harm. Ma, what khalaq, he created. People may translate it as, some people do, I seek refuge with the Lord of the daybreak from the evil, from 
his created evil okay the things that he created are not 100% evil the only 100% evil thing on the face of the earth was the shaitan he's 100% evil okay second to him is Firon but the first is 100% shaitan so that is pure evil but when Allah says ma khalaq it means of what he created yani everything that Allah created or Allah creates has got good and bad both so whatever good even in us we have good and bad characteristics both inherently we are born with good and bad we are sinless when we are born of course but we have those characteristics and Allah says Qad afla, and Allah says in the soul Allah takes oath of so many things and then Allah says قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مَنْ زَكَّهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَهَا And Allah says it is the soul that can recognize the taqwaha wa fujuraha. It can recognize what is taqwa and what is fujur. So it is very very clear in the Quran that the soul recognizes. We have good and bad in us. We have evil and good and shar and khair both in ourselves. So what Allah is saying that from the things that he created, of the things that he created, we are seeking refuge from those things which have bad in it, which have evil in it. Not from the whole thing, but the evil thing in that. Okay? وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ And from the evil of غَاسِق غَاسِق means darkness غَاسَقَ means which covers in darkness إِذَا وَقَبَ When it spreads So we, this is the night time dua And why the dua at night time? Because most of the evils are done at night time no, this is what? This is falaq of the daybreak, right? And then Allah says of the nightness, from the evil of the darkness. Yeah, from the day and of the night. Both things, because some things, some bad things are doing, are being done during the day. The businesses and stuff and the lies and all that is done during the day. But what happens at night? The nightclubs and the dancing and all that promiscuity and all that shamefulness and everything, shamelessness and indecence and immoralities, those are done at night. The clubs and stuff and prostitution and everything. So Allah is saying, don't only seek refuge from one thing, seek refuge from both, from the day and from the night. Pardon? The the darkness or the darkness no, no, the darkness of the night. When it spreads, it spreads, yeah. Especially for the night, when it covers the night, yeah. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاسَاتِ فِي الْأُقَدِ And we know about this, that we, there are people who do magic and stuff, you know, black magic, and they blow on the threads, and they blow on knots, and this and that. Specifically, this is for that, because people come up with so many things. Oh, we have, somebody has done magic on us. We have to go to these amels, and these amels then rip them off, and they charge them and say, do this. And I, I know so many people who have been totally ripped off. They, they have become like bankrupt because they go to an amel and that amel, amel will never cure them. They cannot cure them. They don't even know how to do it. They just get them into confidence and they rob them of all the money. So be careful of them. So it says from the evil of the blowers, nafasat who blow. Nafaka means to blow. So when nafa means nafasa means to blow. So uh, when nafasat means the blowers fill uqad in the knots. When they make knots and they do magic. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ And from the evil of the hasid. Who is the hasid? The one who does hasad. The one who is jealous. The one who envies you. So the envier, but then Allah makes it clear, if there's somebody who's envying you and he is not doing anything, it's okay. He's envying you. You have something, he wants that, but he's not doing something. So clarification is إِذَا hasad when they envy. When he envies you, when he does something, when he tries to harm you, they see your car, oh, it's a good car. They will take their key. They will go all around the car and put a line. Have you seen that? It happens. Zubair, not your car, okay. <laughs> so um, this is the, the dua that we should read every day after every prayer. Qul falaq and qul nas. We finish the prayer. We do the, the askar and these askar include the ayat al-kursi and these three. 
So remember. And قُلْ أَوْزُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Again, this is seeking refuge with the Lord. Say, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَوْزُ I seek refuge بِرَبِّ with the Lord of the people. Did you notice something? Here, we were seeking refuge of بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ Only one. رَبِّ الْفَلَقْ there is no other Rabb of this and Rabb of that and Rabb of Bil Falak. Because he is the Rabb during the night, during the day, everything. And then we are talking about, and another thing, we are talking about things that are outside. Somebody is doing magic, somebody is doing something some, during the day, during the night, sins that are tempting us, all this. Here it comes to so many types of Qul Auzu Bi Rabbin Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahin Nas. Three times it is repeated. It's a big difference, right? Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the people. Annas of the people. Malikin Nas, the king of the people. Ilahin Nas, the Ilah. I've written God over here because it was God. So I just wanted to make it clear. It's the one who's worthy of worship. But he's the God of the people, right? For, we are talking about ourselves only. We seek refuge with the Lord of the people, the king of the people, and the God of the people. Why? Because all three of these function at different levels. It's the same one God, same Allah, same Rabb, but he, different, he functions at different levels. The Rabb is the one who cherishes. The Malik is the one who is the owner, who has the authority. And the Ilah is the one we worship. So again, there are three different levels. And then we say, Min Sharril Waswas. We are, what are we seeking? Over there, we sought refuge from so many things of the day of the night of the evil of the people who are doing magic and everything here is only one thing we are calling god by three names and we are asking refuge from one thing and what is that min sharril waswasil khannas shar is the evil of the waswas waswas is the waswasa the whispering of khannas khannas means the one who comes and he goes back he comes he attacks he tempts you and he goes back. Khannas. Retreating. That's why the word retreating is here. There are so many words. I didn't know which one to pick. He comes and he goes. He will not be continuously telling you to do something. He will come at the right time. At the right place. When you are weak. When you are susceptible. Then he comes and he says, okay, do this now. The weakest time of our life. When you see something and the shaitan doesn't come and only tell us like, our teachers used to say that the shaitan will not come to me and tell me, okay, do shirk. Will I accept it? No, I won't. Then he will say, okay, make sujood to somebody. I won't do it. Then he will say, okay, stop reading salah. Will I do it? No, I won't do it. Stop reading Quran. Stop uh, observing fire. I won't do it. But then he will come at a time when there is a Quran khatam or a Quran khani or you know what, your milad or something, some beads, one, one lakh, 25,000 times. A kind of thing that you will think this is something to do with Islam. This is something that you must do. This is a good deed. So shaitan will come in and say, look, you are doing only the salah and the zakah and the hajj and all this. This is nothing. You want to come closer to Allah? Do all this. Do all this. Do this. Do this. So he comes at that time with a different strategy. He tells us to do things which are not in the sunnah. So we start doing things which are bidah. So it's so easy to get into bidah. And whoever does bidda does it with a good heart, with a good intention, trying to be more religious, not trying to go out of deen. But this is what happens. So that's why we have to be very careful. So we say, Allah said, say, seek refuge from the evil of the whisperer, the retreating, the one who you waswisu, alladhi, you know, the one who you waswisu, who whispers, fi sudur in nas. Fi means into, sudur means breasts annas of the people and who can they be minal jinnati wa nas we are talking about the shaitan now we are adding the jinn and the people so the shaitan can be from among our people it could be our best friends it could be our parents god forbid but there are people who have parents who do not allow the children to go to the masjid to learn the quran to wear the hijab to do things that they want to do so it could be from anyone your, your relatives, your friends, your peers, your colleagues, anybody. So that's what Allah says when the seek refuge from these shayateen. They could be from jinn, they could be from the ins, from the people. Last surah for today, I chose this. It is not a dua. 
it is something that, that all Muslims must follow. It is a command from Allah. When the Sahaba used to meet each other, they would not depart until they read this to each other. And we have to be very careful about this. It's Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Be, just listen carefully. Wal-Asr, you've done the worst, I've just uh, made it blue so that you can differentiate. Wal-Asr, what is the wal over here? It's an oath, right? We discussed about it. Wal asr. You cannot start like this a surah wal asr without being it a oath. So it's wal asr by the time. What does it mean? Some people have interpreted it's the time of asr. It's the declining time. It's the running time. It's the fleeing time. Whatever it is, it's time. It's time. It's time. So do we have? the concept of time in our lives. I know Sheikh Mustafa has, but I don't know about any one of us. Do we really have the concept, the real concept of time? If you look at that, what do you call it? The sand, something that you keep. What is it called? Yeah, the, the one that just the sand goes and it's finished, right? Yeah, so you keep it like this and in one minute it's gone. It's gone. That time is already gone. It won't come again. It will never come again. Yesterday can never become today, and today will never become tomorrow. Tomorrow will become today. We have to realize the concept of time. Time is short. We don't know. For us, we think, oh, we have a lot of time. I can do Hajj when I get old. I can do this. I can do that. I can reform myself tomorrow. I leave this tomorrow. Do I have any guarantee that I went, I can walk out of this room without, in like living? I don't know. I can die right here. I can die right here. Any, of, any one of us can. So time is short. The only time we have is what we have right now. Time is something which we cannot even freeze. Sometimes we say, okay, this is too much. We have a lot of leftover. We'll freeze it. We'll have it tomorrow. We'll have it day after. Can you freeze time? Can you freeze it and then thaw it? If you freeze time, it's gone. It's gone forever. You cannot thaw your time. You cannot... You cannot reuse it later. It's gone forever. And if you look at the watch ticking, you will see what was just two minutes ago, it's gone now. We started the class, now we are at the end of the class. Four weeks ago, we were at the beginning of the first lesson, we are at the end of the lesson. This is the reality of time. And the reality of time, we can only learn from the one who is selling ice. The one who is selling ice. If he is a, a man who is, doesn't have a big freezer or something, he's like a rekhdi wala in Pakistan, and he has a slab of ice, and he's shouting, please, please buy my ice, please buy my ice, and then he says, mera khazana ghul raha hai. All my fortune, my treasure, it's just dissolving. It's melting. If the ice melts, are you going to buy something from him? Are you going to buy the water from him? No. That is the reality of time. That is exactly the reality of time. We have to understand, time will not stop for us. We have to go with the time. That's why it's called running time, fleeing time, short time, the time of asr, which goes so fast. Allah takes oath by time. And then he says, innal insana lafi khusr. Inna means, everybody knows, we did it, indeed, surely. Al insan, the mankind, the human being. La fi. We did la and we did fi. What is la? Surely. What is fi? In. Wal asr, the timing, Allah takes oath. Indeed, the human being is surely in khusr. What is khusr? State of loss. Again, here there is a double kasra. Kasratain. It's actually khusrin. We stop here because the ayah ends. When there is a double kasra, it means it is another emphasis. Look at the emphasis. Wal asr is an emphasis. It's an oath. Inna, emphasis. Al insan, it's not just one human being. It's the entire mankind. La, another emphasis. Khusrin, another emphasis. In these two ayat, wal asr, inna al insan, lafi khus, there's emphasis upon emphasis upon emphasis. 
to realize what we are supposed to do and then allah says that surely human humankind the human being is in a state of loss surely do we have any doubts about it no we say we are born sinless but the thing is allah made us in the best of molds but what do we do we take ourselves to asfal asafilin so allah is saying we are in a state of loss illa then allah has given us a way out illa except alladhina those who amanu those who believe those who believe in in the islamic belief system in everything that allah wants us to believe wa amilu salihat there is wa over here and i specifically colored it because it means and it's not one or the other it's both it's not only both it's four things that we have to do we must do we are ordered to do we are commanded to do and if we don't do all these four things then we are in a state of loss this is the only thing allah said illa except those who believe wa amilu salihat and they do righteous deeds wa tawasso and they enjoy tawasso means to exhort each other to enjoy to tell each other bil haqq again haq is a long word it has too many meanings the right the the rights the right the right thing the true thing everything is haq so you tell each other about what your huquq are this is what you are supposed to do this is the right thing this is what you should do so it's not only haq it's also huquq and the huquq again is divided into huquq allah and huquq al-ibad so if you remind somebody then you will not be in a loss allah has given us but what do we do do we enjoy the huquq to somebody over here in the us no because we say it's her business it's his business how can i say i have no right to say allah gave us the right to say say it in a nice way say it nicely say it with hikma say it so that it pierces into the person this is our duty watawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr and when you say these things to somebody you will need patience you will need patience yourself because somebody is going to say who are you to say that you tell somebody anything you are going to get this i get it all the time who are you to tell us it's between me and allah okay so even this is between me and allah allah tells us what four things alladhina amanu wa amilus salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr we say okay we have believed we do good deeds but the last two i can't do no you can do it with people whom you know you have some authority do it with your family do it with your children do it with anybody whom you know your best friends if they don't listen to you they don't agree with you they are not your best friends change your friends you can change your friends you can't change your relatives so remember that's why i wanted to end with this i wanted to say this so badly that it's not just my duty or dr sana's duty or sheikh mustafa's duty to say this to everybody else it is every single person's duty we are created in loss and unless we do all these four things within our authority within our jurisdiction we will be in a state of loss we will be drowning we have to come up first thing is to realize that we are in a state of loss second thing is to get knowledge so that we are well equipped third thing is to implement it in our lives ourselves and if we don't do ourselves and we tell others to do they it will not have any impact so may allah accept it from us may allah make us of those who are not in a state of loss and may allah make us from those whom allah loves and allah does not dislike last of all like i said in the beginning beginning i would like to extend my thanks in the end because all of us would be here genuinely and sincerely i extend my thanks number 1 to allah he made it possible he enabled us to have this class in the month of ramadan in the month of quran to do something to learn some, something about the quran I'm grateful to Allah to give me this chance to do this and I'm grateful to Allah for sending all of you and the people who are watching online or who will be listening to the recording that may Allah accept it from all of us. Number 2, I would like to thank CIU California Islamic University and Islamic Institute of Orange County for making this possible. Number 3, not the least, I think all credit goes to Dr. Sana. He was the one he proposed. He proposed this and you know he is he is a big man in icu and iioc so his word counts 
He said he wants this course. So Alhamdulillah, may Allah give the reward of each and every word that we said and we learned to him, inshallah. May Allah make him from those who always be on the straight path. Another thanks are due to those who have helped me. I'm not going to name anybody. Some people don't like when I name them, but there are people who have helped me behind the scenes. So I'm very grateful to them for helping me in whatever way they could. May Allah give them the reward for each and everything that they did. If there are anything that I said wrong, or it was a misinterpretation, or I said something which was uh, not authentic hadith or whatever, may Allah forgive me, it was from me and it was from the shaitan. But whatever I said, may Allah accept it. What I tried my best to design the course, and uh, I hope you liked the course. It was something very different, something unique, which I tried, and uh, may Allah accept it. So thanks to all of you, thanks to Allah, thanks to all of you. And um, Dr. Sana, there was a request. I don't, I don't know many rich people over here. Since um, Shaiba is here, maybe Shaiba is one of the richest and Dr. Sana is one of the richest that I know uh, over here. Um, the, some of the ladies, some of the sisters, I told in the beginning that they are having problems with getting this whole document printed out because there are colors in it and when they go to print it out, they charge a lot, like um, $1.50 per page. Is there any way you guys can help in printing this out and a few, a few? Dr. Sana, somebody else beat you. You have a color printer? Okay, so you all can arrange this, inshallah. And another thing that all the, sure, 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 inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. And uh, another thing is that um, some of the participants, they said they want to be on the list of, uh, they want to know what kind of courses are coming. They were interest, they got interested in, in this course and they want similar courses to be done. Inshallah, again, that will be up to the board of CIU and IIOC. I don't do things uh, with my own sweet will. I would love to, but uh, we depend on the board to decide. So if there are any such suggestions, you can send them in writing to either IIOC or CIU and inshallah, uh, they will let us know if we can have any such courses during the year. Some of them wanted me to do this in Urdu, the same course. It may take some time to, to translate all this in Urdu. It may not be easy for me, but if it is, if a lot of uh, women want it, then we can also have one course in Urdu, inshallah. That should be easy because that is other than the regular CIU course. As for the CIU regular courses, you have to do enrollment in the CIU regular courses at calislamic.com and uh, you can send any um, uh, email to them at info at calislamic. And if you want to be on the regular list, then there, is, there are two ways of doing it. One, to get on the list of CIU, subscribe to it. The other is to get on the list of IIOC. If you get on the list of IIOC and just put subscribe over there, I think you will get all the mail. And usually whatever courses I have or we have over here, other than the regular CIU courses, you will be informed through the IIOC weekly bulletin, inshallah. Parallel with Urdu or? Oh, oh, many words, yeah. When I'm seeing the Arabic word, I actually identify the Urdu word so much. Yeah, like Fakir and like, uh, like Ajib. Ajib. And also, there are some words in Arabic. I would like to do a course on that. Sheikh Mustafa, you can, well, you are the person who can, you know, influence Sheikh Mustafa. Um, that we should have a course on Mutaradifat. That means that there are certain words in Arabic which have the same, which have the opposite meaning. Opposite meaning. For example, I can give you say, zanna. Zanna means to assume. Assume, right? And zarta also means, I'm sure. Being sure and assuming. Two opposite things. Salim, for example, salim. Salim comes when you are at peace. And salim also comes when you are bitten by a snake and you are, you know, in pain. So there are other words, I'm not, I'm not a, an expert in mutaradifat, but inshallah I would want to be one if 
we have this course, we can have a short course on Mutaradifat and I would like to learn all this. And there are many such courses which we can do outside the CIU normal curriculum. And uh, is Sheikh, uh, is um, Dr. Sana satisfied? Did you get what you expected from this course? I would like your feedback. Yeah, no, I, I really like the and the Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So you're happy. Because he was the one who said, we want this course, and he was the one who said, I want Sister Nasreen to do this course, right? And then I believe, he said, because she's strict. <laughs> I wasn't. Yeah, you said strict? I got two versions. Uh, somebody said strict, and somebody said, you said, no, she's good. So I, I, I'll take both, strict and good. A good person should be strict and strict should be good. So please forgive me if anybody got hurt or I did anything that may have uh, intentionally or unintentionally hurt anyone. And I thank all of you again for being here. It uh, meant a lot because especially in these ta last 10 days, I didn't expect people to come after s uh, staying awake all night and then coming here. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilai. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.